And we're live. Yay. So, hey, everybody, it's Shane T here um, talking about some ignition coil testing that I'm doing today. And I'm doing it for uh, a couple of reasons. But the main reason is that I had a customer car who I was working on recently who had a problem with um, misfire, basically, on, on some different cylinders. And we couldn't really work out the reason why. Well, it turns out that they recently got some new coils. And uh, they were replacement coils for the ones that they had originally, but they weren't purchased from the same place. So as you can imagine, uh, they, they don't actually act the same. Now, this was not something that was immediately obvious, um, and it took a little bit of thought. And then once I put them on the test bench and tested them, it was completely obvious what's going on. But I thought I would just illustrate that because uh, I think it's potentially something... Uh, that can happen to somebody else. And so now that Paul Yaw has had a chance to see my face, which I know he hates, which is why I always start all my videos with my face, I'm gonna flip this thing around so we can kind of look at what we have going on here. So I've got this new stabilization uh, device that I'm trying to use to make the video better. But anyway, what we have is uh, Motec M800 running on a simulator hooked to a power supply with a uh, what the sort of famous IGN 1A coil that everybody sells, including um, Motec. Motec sells it through race grade, and this happens to be a uh, non-race grade replacement uh, coil um, that I'm testing at the moment. So I have the ECU obviously triggering the uh, igniter that's built into this coil assembly, and then just sort of standard everyday tuner stuff. Pretty much every tuner has a setup like this with a spark plug wire and a spark plug in a little test chamber. Now, normally I hook air pressure to it so I can load the uh, spark plug more, but um, in this case, I just wanna have an idea of what this coil does compared to the other coil. And it was completely obvious once I actually turned the thing on and checked it. And then we have a variable power supply there, lab scope, four channel, uh, and then there's the M800 software running on my laptop. So what I'm gonna do is just run through the test of the coil itself to begin with so let's give it some rpm here and we can hear the coil going if we look through these little observation windows here we should be able to see a spark yeah so i've got a spark plug in there with no ground strap on it so it's got a fixed gap that's jumping inside of there and then the test chamber is going to ground over here then i've got the um the uh, one end of the uh, scope lead to the ground side so that I can watch the current going through the secondary circuit when it delivers spark. So that's basically what we're looking at here on the scope. The blue trace is the scope lead that's measuring the secondary current. And the pink trace, let me just change the time base here a little bit, is measuring the, um, the current going to the primary winding of the coil by measuring the, uh, the current to the power feed for the coil using an inductive amp clamp. So, so this purple trace here on the bottom that's got a triangular shape that goes from the bottom up is the primary current, and then the blue trace is the secondary spark current. So um, the, the first thing that you would normally do with any coil is find the amount of dwell that it takes to maximize the ignition output energy. Uh, and the way you can find that is by ramping the dwell up. Um, so I'm just gonna try and do this with one hand on the EC on the laptop, one hand on the scope. And what we ought to see as I ramp the dwell up um, is that the current going into the primary increases. And you can see, of course, that the secondary output current is increasing as well. So what, what you would typically do to find the proper dwell for the coil where you get maximum energy, I have to change the scale here on these because I'm going off the top of the screen. So I'm gonna to continue to ramp the dwell time up until I see it start to flatten out. And there, we can see the top of the, of the curve is starting to flatten out there. I'm gonna make it extra long so it's obvious. You can see it's actually dropping off now. The current on the primary side drops off if you overdwell the coil as it gets hot. Okay, so then we have sort of a constant running current here of about two and a half amps. Um, this thing's running at 3,500 RPM. Um, with eight milliseconds of dwell in this case, is 23% duty cycle uh, at 15 volts on this particular coil. Um, so let me lock that in. Oops, shit, I hit the wrong key. Let's try the enter key now, that's better. Okay, so now we have sort of 
a waveform here showing us and that sucks because when I stopped it got rid of it and it's probably gonna keep doing that unless I turn the dwell down or the RPM down yeah I'm gonna turn the dwell down so let's reduce the dwell to four just so we have a waveform to look at on the scope if we want to okay so anyway uh, ignition output energy there's how you figure out how much uh, to charge the coil which of course every manufacturer that sells these coils uh, provides that information for you and that's how they find uh, what the maximum charge needs to be for a given battery voltage that varies with with uh, battery voltage obviously and then you could see over here uh, if I give it RPM again I'm calculating the uh, dwell duty cycle or the coil duty cycle by RPM so if we go really high up in RPM over here 15,000 see we're at 55 percent dwell with a four millisecond charge time and with a fixed charge time that that duty cycle will vary with RPM but anyway so the point that I'm trying to make is that we had this this coil on a customer car which is completely supposed to be exactly what a replacement for a race grade IGN 1A coil is now the clue here which should be completely obvious uh, but maybe isn't is that this coil was purchased through Amazon and it's like half price of an IGN 1A coil from race grade it was like 38 bucks or some shit like that so the problem is when you measure all this stuff and you calculate the ignition energy which is really just a matter of looking at the output current times the voltage over and, and then integrating that over time you end up with these two completely different looking ignition output energy curves from the two coils so as you can guess the blue curve is the actual ignition output energy and again this doesn't necessarily mean anything it doesn't mean that the 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 in, inexpensive coil wouldn't work on some application but on this particular turbo boosted application using methanol this coil for sure exhibited a misfire problem that we did not have when we had the the actual race grade IGN 1A on the car so what you see is the ignition output energy of the two coils and so the problem is of course uh, you don't if you don't know that one is not the same as the other and you try to run them with the same amount of charge um, charge time because you think it's a replacement coil you end up with less ignition output energy now it takes a different amount of charge time to charge this coil fully than it does an actual race grade IGN 1A uh, but even when you charge it to its maximum you still can't get the ignition energy that you get with an IGN 1A coil from race grade so this is a lesson in cheaper isn't always better of course everyone that sells cheap shit will make the claim oh our stuff does the same thing that that other one does and it's less money well here's another example which should be completely fucking obvious to everybody in the whole world that has a brain you never get something for nothing right you never get something that has the quality or has the same specification for half the price that does the actual same job there's always some drawback and listen it's human nature to go for the one that's less expensive same reason I go oh you know what I'm gonna go buy a television for my backyard I'm not gonna buy the $3,500 Sony television I'm gonna buy the Chinese knockoff one for 500 bucks well guess what it's they're both 42 inch screens and both of them will bring in the same channels to look at but they're actually not the same quality the difference is I don't expect my $500 Chinese knockoff to actually do the same thing that the Sony television does but hey it's outside in the backyard and so what do I care if it if I, if I ruin the $500 one I'll go buy fucking seven more right but in the case of your race car that you're spending many thousands of dollars on it doesn't make much sense to save you know in this case probably $90 to to eventually end up with a problem so buy your stuff from a reputable manufacturer someone that invests the time to make sure that what you're getting is a quality piece and doesn't just order the shit from China put their label on it or part number on it and ship it out the door and call it the same thing that everybody else sells so this is the difference between let's say a reseller and someone that actually spends some time 
has invested in some equipment to have some and has some knowledge that they include in the product that they sell, which is why it's more money on top of the fact that it's probably manufactured to a different tolerance, even though it looks exactly like the one that costs more. So that's my rant for today. That's your uh, uh, ignition output energy and how you test a coil for the proper dwell um, charge for maximum output lesson. And that's basically all I got, but don't, don't, don't fall into the same trap. It's easy to fall into, it's human nature, but grow a brain, you get what you pay for every time. And that's all I got. If you like this video, um, you can follow me on Instagram, Tuned by Shane T. You can uh, follow me on YouTube, Tuned by Shane T. You can, you can follow my Facebook page, my personal Facebook page, Shane Tecklenburg, but you can't friend me because I've already got 5,000. Or you can follow my Tuned by Shane T. Facebook page. So appreciate your time. If you like the video, share it. Uh, if you don't like the video, too fucking bad. And Paul Yaw, uh, blow me.